I want a skewer that will go through this axle from a bike. And standard skewers are not long enough. Okay, it won't go all the way through. That's standard rear screw skewer. I have not seen one. Uh, it's got to be 175 between the gripping centers because that's the distance over there. Uh, I've managed to drill out the end here so this skewer will go through. So as I can't get one easily, and I'll show you what the skewer's for later, uh, I'm going to cut the skewer and join it, separate it and join it in the middle. The extra length I think I need is about an inch, a couple of centimetres there, uh, and then the end of the skewer will screw, screw on. These are the ends of this skewer. They're designed to carry a particular type of trailer. Yep. So I uh, need to lengthen the skewer. Now, my plan is then to take a piece of stock bar steel. Where do I get my stock bar steel from? Well, this has come off um, an old oven tray. It's actually out of a commercial oven. Uh, so it's uh, heavier than regular oven tray that has been thrown out somewhere. And I took it to uh, put into a barrel to make a barbecue. Anyway, uh, these ends were cut off it. And so the bar stock is basically from that. So there's two diameters. That would work. The bit I'm cutting now is a little oversize. And the reason for that, I'll show you as we go along, because I want to be able to drill into it so I can insert part of the skewer, uh, slot it down, and then weld because I'm not sufficiently confident of my ability to uh, weld to be able to just drill in and, and weld around. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, do it a slightly different way and I'll show you that way later. And then what I'm going to have to do is turn it down uh, so it's of a small enough diameter to fit inside the axle because that's too big a diameter only by a couple of millimeters but even so. Let's see so this is my bar stock an old bit of um, oven grill. All right, there's the original skewer, now cut in two. And there's the extension piece, that piece of grill. And let's see. Right, and it just pushes into there. It's a nice tight fit, fortunately, using imperial drills. And I think what I'm going to do is just slot this because I don't trust my ability just to do a nice, neat circular weld there. So I'm going to slot it so I get some weld a long way as well. So, so it's got uh, some good grip. And that will extend the skewer. Right then, there is the skewer. I fit the uh, eccentric uh, lock quick release bit on there. That's the old skewer cut. This was a um, two or three millimeters greater diameter piece of steel, uh, as you saw, taken from a bit of cooker tray, uh, drilled with the skewer cut and then inserted into either end a blob or two of weld. And we'll, it's not the best weld at all, far from it. Uh, I couldn't get the machine working properly, uh, so I'm afraid it is just blobbed. However, it doesn't seem to be able to be, I can't pull it apart. But time will tell whether that part's in the middle under the tension. Uh, we will just have to see, but at the moment it seems to be stuck in there. And there I have an extended skewer to allow a bob type trailer to be used with one of those through axle type uh, new new sort of axles. Right, so I've managed to make the skewer longer so that I can fit the bob type trailer onto the back of my e-bike. So um, a lot of messing about, cutting, splicing the skewer just drilling out the end of the uh, axle a little bit so that the skewer would go through. But now we have it, I just need to take it for a test drive.
extended skewer for the single wheel trailer. Um, these are sold under the single wheel trailers, which look like that, are sold under a couple of uh, different trade names. Uh, can't remember offhand what they are. M bike might be one. Uh, anyway. Uh, not under the same trade name as what I bought it, but they're virtually the same trailer. So this bit in the middle, which has been ground down quite a bit now, is the extension piece. And finally, after two or three attempts at welding, uh, it's welded now and seems to be tight. What I've just realised when fitting it is that that is a snug fit through the uh, hex key end of the through bolt axle. That's quite a snug fit in the middle of the axle, but it was a loose fit here. And so any strain on there, because I don't want to, that doesn't need to be over tightened, uh, is going to be flexing this up and down because this moves inside the end of the axle. And I didn't want that. So I've wound a piece of wire around there and I'll just show you it going into the bike. Uh, I'll put this may be upside down, but this is the threaded end of the through axle is just coming out here. The hex bolt end is the other one. So this just goes in. That just fits snugly. And then uh, as I push that in, then what I'm going to do is wind that in. And if I get it winding in the right direction, it has wound in once. Now I'm doing a video of it. It might be bunching up and not going in. Ah, you know what? That's exactly what it's doing. So it's a. Uh... I'm winding it in the opposite way to what I've turned it. Because I don't need to uncurl as I'm winding in. I don't think. It's not working on video. I've managed to tighten it up and it's gone in. And so there's much less slop at this end.